and welcome to the very first segment of Tech Talk here on Channel 14 in West Dallas. I'll introduce a little bit about um, myself, Debbie Dietzel, and my better half, Laverne. Uh, this is going to be a show about technology, computers, and, and other type of tech things. And I'd like to start with just a little humorous story about the time that my husband, Laverne, and I first entered the computer age. He was working as a graduate student in Davis, California, and he asked me to type a simple five-page paper. Well, with the complexity of the computers at the time, I used up the time on the university computer, so I had to manually type the paper, and since I was a bit obsessed with detail, about every other sentence I asked him, do you really want it to read like this? And so we, we did survive the evening of, uh, of an all-nighter of typing one five-page paper, but we decided after that night that we really needed a personal computer. The time was 1985, and we've certainly come a long way since then. Laverne and myself, Debbie, we, we do live here in Milwaukee, and no, my name is not, not Shirley, uh, but um, we do know, know a little bit about technology and computers, and, and actually, from that time in 1985 when we did purchase our first uh, personal computer because of, of the difficulties of hand typing it and marital discord, we, uh, we actually have come a ways. Uh, since that time, Laverne learned, I think as a result of our very first personal computer was struck directly by lightning. Laverne took every bit of it apart and uh, through testing it, he eventually learned how to build, repair, and teach about computers and other uh, technology. So that's uh, just a little introduction of how we first got into the computer age. And I'm going to turn it over to him, Laverne Dietzel, to talk about today's topic, which is preventing computer disaster. Thank you. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about preventing computer disaster. Most of us have been, at one time or another, visited by Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy has a law, and it says if something will go wrong, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And the corollary to that is, of course, at the worst possible moment. Right when the paper is due for the school, right when the picture needs to be attached to the email, something will go wrong. Today we're going to talk about four areas to get over those, to prevent those visits from Mr. Murphy. And uh, to do that, we're going to go through four, four areas, like I said, one for user errors, software glitches, heat and humidity, and finally, hardware errors. By the end of the show, you'll know a lot of things about how to prevent Mr. Murphy's visits. Now, Mr. Murphy wants to visit you. And oftentimes, Mr. Murphy visits you because you've asked him. That's the first thing that happens the first cause of these problems you have in your computer is you, user error. Today, we're going to spend a couple minutes talking about how you can avoid user error. Surprisingly, most of the things that you do in a computer are pretty natural. You press some keys, you click the mouse, and things visually happen on screen. But once in a while, you press the wrong key. Most places, you hit the backspace or the delete key, and you back up and try it again. But if you hit the wrong key, or they'll click on the wrong thing. In some ways, things go kind of strange. Maybe you wanted to cut and paste something and instead you deleted the whole document. That's a pain. The best way to avoid those kind of errors is to simply understand the software that you are running. If you're running Windows, or if you're running Microsoft Word, or if you're running Open Office, or whatever you're running, you need to understand it. And usually, that software comes with something called a manual. I have some manuals here. For instance, here's one, Teach Yourself the Internet and the World Wide Web. Obviously, it's an old book, otherwise it would not have said the Internet and the World Wide Web because we think of those as the same thing. But this is a book meant for 
for you to pick up and, and read through and study to figure out how to do things on the internet. Other books, like upgrading and repairing your PC, a bit heftier, um, come in different, uh, from different manufacturers. This one here is from Cybex, I would go from Q. And they uh, teach you a lot more details about how to take care of things. Whatever software you're using or hardware you're using, usually comes with a manual. Now sometimes it doesn't come with a hardware, I mean a hard book like this or a soft book, sometimes it comes on a CD or sometimes it's included. The first thing you want to do is look for the help screen. There's two ways to get to the help screen. Press the F1 key, that's the function key at the top of your keyboard. It's up on the upper left. That almost always brings you to the help screen. The other way to find help is to click on the menu and look at the word help. It's usually on the far right of your menu bar for whatever program you have. Click on help and then go down to their contents. When you get that far, what you will find is the same thing that you found in these books. At the end, you will find an index. Every single help program I've ever seen has an index. So instead of trying to read through a book like this, Simply use the help, help screens and the help uh, manuals as tools, like a toolbox. If you want to know how to cut and paste, put cut and paste in the search part of it and it will bring you to all everything that has to do with cut and paste and so on and so forth. So reading the manual by looking through the glossary, or sorry, looking through the index is the number one way to find help. If that doesn't work for you, if the book is too hard to understand, you can always go to the internet and ask. There are all kinds of forms. There's forms for Microsoft Word, for Windows, everything else. You can always ask and a lot of people will answer you. Now that's one way, and that's probably the biggest way to avoid problems with your computer is to make sure you understand what you're using. Another thing you can do is to understand that in addition to the user errors, there are software glitches. Now a software glitch will happen when uh, your screen suddenly locks up or a mouse quits moving. Two things you can do at that point. If your screen locks up, wait. Almost always it will kick back in for a moment or two. What's happened is there's some software in the background that's running, doing something that's too intense. You're just saying, wait, I gotta catch up, and it's trying to catch up with you. So you can always go to the, uh, just by waiting and watching out. If it continues to happen all the time, the second most important thing to do is just simply restart your computer. Go to the Start menu if you're in Windows and say Shut Down. And if you're in a Mac, go up and say Shut Down also. It's in their menu also. Shut them completely, completely down and then start it up again. That almost always takes care of your software glitches. A third area that you run into problems is, of course, heat and humidity. Now, heat is the number one enemy to computers or any technology. Every single circuit puts out heat. And when it does, the circuit expands. When it cools off, it contracts. That movement back and forth eventually breaks the circuit. That's why circuit boards die. You keep it cool and it doesn't expand as much, therefore it lasts longer. How do you do that? Number one, make sure the airflow around your computer is sufficient. There should be four to six inches on all sides of the computer, front, back, and top. Obviously, you can't have four to six inches on the bottom because then the computer would be floating and I'd like to know how you did that. Okay, number two, if you want, once or twice a year, you need to take the cover off your computer, take a can of compressed air, and just blow it out. This is especially true if you're a smoker. If you're a smoker, you are killing your computer. That's as simple as I can put it. The sm uh, s uh, smoke is attracted to cigarette, cigarette smoke is attracted to circuits, puts a powdered substance on that, and I can tell instantly when somebody smokes because they open up and it's just yucky inside. So if you're a smoker, blow it out a lot more often, probably every three months. The fourth thing that does, uh, that kills your computer is hardware errors. Now hardware errors usually happen in what's called a subsystem. Okay, the computer has its computing thing, but it also has some storage that's in a hard drive, that's a subsystem. It has a power supply, that's a subsystem. These subsystems can fail and not affect the computer at all. It won't work, but it doesn't affect it. You can just replace that subsystem. So just because your computer dies, doesn't mean that the whole thing has to be replaced. The 
Best thing you can do when you, if it dies completely is take it and have it looked at. If on the other hand it's some small thing, like maybe your keyboard isn't working, get a different keyboard. That'll take care of it. And that's the hardware error. So Mr. Murphy can visit you, but you can fight back. You can uh, uh, uninvite him by simply following those four things. Make sure that you uh, understand the software you're using. Make sure that when you run into a so hard software gl uh, glitch of some kind, you just restart the computer or you wait and wait for it to catch up. Uh, keep your computer, the airflow around your computer uh, open and clean. Don't put it in a computer desk with a little tiny little box that they let you slide it into. Those computer desks are <laughs> kill computers more often. There's not enough airflow there. There. And number four is, if you do have a hardware uh, error, don't despair. Oftentimes it just means replacing one small part, keyboard, a mouse, or, or a power supply, or something like that. Well, we've come to a segment of our show that we call the mailbag. But since this is the first uh, ever show of Tech Talk, we have to come up with our own questions. And I was talking with Laverne, and I thought of a question when I was very, very desperate about uh, what was going on with my computer. It was one Saturday in the winter that our refrigerator had, had uh, gone up in smoke. It had quit on us. So I was just simply on, on the internet looking at various places to buy refrigerators. And all of a sudden, all of these uh, uh, things started coming at me on the computer. It was, it was some sort of virus or adware. And, and my immediate reaction was, learn! What do I do? What do I do? So he rushed into the room and he said, turn it off and unplug it. And uh, with friends and, and with clients of ours, I, I've repeated this story and many other people have had a similar experience or a similar question of, when something seems like it's taking over my computer, what do I do? So that's today's mailbag question. Generally speaking, when something is taking over your computer, you'll know it because a lot of strange things will be popping up. First of all, you'll have some kind of warning. You've got 20 bazillion viruses and they're taking over. Do you want us to fix it? The answer is no, I want you to go away. And how you do that, because if you try to outwit the program, it just keeps going. It's faster than you are. It knows your computer better than you do. If you try to shut down one screen, it'll pop up another, and it just keeps going and going and going. The longer you wait to stop it, the more infested you become. And then it's very difficult to, to, stop, to clean it out. So the fastest thing to do is just reach over and turn it off. Now, there are two ways to do that. You can, if you wish, you can try going down to the start button and shut down. But unfortunately, usually, it's just not going to work. It's going to take too long. So you can hold the uh, startup button in, your actual, the button you push to start your computer, four to five seconds. That will shut it down. Or if you want to be even faster, reach around behind it, pull the plug. I always tell my students, they are in charge of the computer. The computer is not in charge of them.